Hi, Boulder Bookstore. I'm Christina Fischeris. I'm the author of Love Songs for Skeptics. Um, I'm standing outside on a very chilly uh, London night because I wanted to show you the Royal Albert Hall, iconic music venue. Uh, you know if, about those yourselves, I guess. You've got Red Rocks. Um, but I thought it was fitting that I come and talk to you about my book here because it's about a music journalist and this was the place where I came for my very first gig. I was 14, the band was Aztec Camera, I'm not sure anyone still remembers them, but I love them. Um, my, my background is magazine journalism, so I kind of knew a little bit about magazines, how they, how they work. Um, I love going to concerts, I love listening to, to records. I've been backstage here, which was quite a thrill actually. It's the pandemic right now, so that's why London is so dead, which, which is why I thought maybe coming here would be kind of cool. But there are a few people walking around. Uh, people have asked what it's been like re uh, releasing a book during a pandemic. All I can say is I think people have it much, much worse. And even though it would have been lovely to go to bookshops and visit people, you know, the, the beauty of technology means we can do it like this. So um, maybe next time around I'll be able to come and say hello in person. I'm very cold and I'd like to read you a passage from my book, but I think I might wait till I'm home, I've had a cup of tea, and then I won't, then you won't hear my teeth chattering as I read. So, yes, hopefully you will now cut to me at home. Hi again, it's me. I'm back home. I'm warm. I've got my cup of tea. Um, I'm going to answer a few more questions about the book. Um, and the first one being, did I set out to write a romance or did it just happen? I would say that by the time I'd finished a serious draft of the book, I knew that the love story part was really important and it is what I like to read. So yes, I would say it's, it's my favourite genre. So yes, and I'll continue to write uh, romantic stories, I would say. Um, another question I've had is what's my writing process like? And I wish I could say it was efficient and painless, but it isn't. Um, but what I do find useful is once I've sat down and thought about the book and thought about the sorts of characters and scenes I'd like, I put everything on index cards, so like this. And then I could, could colour code them, I guess, different, different story arcs, different colours, and then I blue tap them to the wall. And then I just refer to them and I move them around and I get rid of scenes or um, edit them and then I leave horrible stains on the wall and we have to repaint the wall. Genuinely, I didn't think we'd have to do that, but we did. Um, so that's my writing process. Um, another question I've had is, am I going to write any further books um, about some of the other characters in the book? Um, there are no plans, but um, I guess never say never. Um, during pandemic, during the pandemic, what have I been reading? Well, I've been reading rom-coms, basically. I read a few other things. And I look, I've got a pile here of some of my favourite ones. If you need any, if you need any inspiration. Sarah Hogel's You Deserve Each Other, Perfection. Just finished Kate Claiborne's Luck of the Draw. Beautiful, beautiful writing. Mismatched in Manhattan, Tesh Skilton, they're a lovely writing team. A little bit similar to uh, Christina Lauren there, The Unhoneymoon is one of my absolute faves. A brand new book, Emily Henry's The Beach, uh, sorry, Beach Read, absolutely one of my favourites. Um, finally read Daisy Jones and it is absolutely as good as everyone says it is. Um, the wonderful Miranda Dickinson, Our Story, um, The Roommate, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Rosie Denan. And Joanna Baluri, who's brilliant, um, her rom-coms are just brilliant. And this one is a Christmas one and it's her most recent one. So if you need any ideas, these are the sorts of books I can suggest. Okay, so all that's left now is for me to uh, read you a little bit from my book. So I'll do that. So this is Love Songs for Skeptics. I'm not saying I don't believe in love, but my last relationship ended after 12 days. We might have managed a full fortnight if I hadn't come back early from a weekend away and found him with his hand down a barmaid's shirt. Shame really, it was my local and they do two for one mojitos on Sunday nights. If anybody asks, I tell them my one true love is music. 
I can honestly say it's what gets me through long days and lonely nights. I can listen to almost anything, but the one thing I can't stand is a schmaltzy love song. My brother's getting married in a few weeks and asked for help picking a song for his first dance. I suggested Kisses Loves a Slap in the Face. It didn't go down well. So this has been lovely Boulder Bookstore. Um, I hope I hope you've learnt something about me and my book, Love Song Skeptics. Uh, 5th of January is the release date. And um, thank you very much for having me. <laughs>